for yourself. I said, because God, this is what you do. See, you got to be able to see something negative. You and I must be able to not adapt to it to that place. See, because if you and I adapt to it that place, then we're going to respond according to the negative situation. And when I respond according to the negative situation, I'm going to get the wrong results. Who in here need this word? And anytime I respond according to the negative that's happening around me, come on, somebody. Y'all have been to school. Negative and negative shouldn't go together. Oh, Jesus. Let me speak to y'all that's in, in, in agreement with negatives. Amen. Two negatives, two negatives. Whether you husband and wife or sister and sister, sister and brother. Amen. I don't know mother and daughter. Let me speak to the two negatives. Can I speak to the two negatives? Amen. That's trying to make you adapt to the negative situation to cause you to be full of negative that you never see yourself a major part. Amen. Of what God is doing. I want to dismantle the power of negativity inside of you on this morning. And I decree and I declare that God is dismantling the power of negativity. Amen. That you have come in agreement with. As a matter of fact, some of you don't come in agreement with your own self negativity. Who am I talking to in here this morning? Who, amen, in your mind, amen, the devil starts speaking negativity and you start speaking it right along with it. I dismantle the thought pattern even right now. I was going somewhere. I was adding up some stuff. And I was telling y'all about our marriage. I was going somewhere. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Going somewhere. Amen. The two negatives can't, amen, come together. It creates chaos. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. No, no, no. Amen. It creates chaos. When two negatives come in agreement. If I'm sitting up here, not believing the word of the Lord, not talking the word of the Lord, amen, and then I tell you my amen negativity, and you come in agreement with it, it's going to create chaos. It's going to create chaos. And for you know it, amen, we're going to be some chaotic people. Amen. But no, what I have to do is realize that I don't respond good. As a matter of fact, it makes me regurgitate. It makes me blow up. Every time negativity comes my way, it makes me just want to throw up. Because I can't stand negativity. Because the word of God is not negative. The word of God is full of life. He said that I came that you may have life and that more abundantly. In other words, he said, when you get my word, the positivity, the positive word inside of you, it causes you to have life. Yes, Jesus. My God. Jesus. My God. Jesus. So you see. It means anytime I'm bent, I'm bent out of shape. But anytime I'm compressed, you've been compressing like I'm compressed in this situation. I'm, amen. Compressed. See, like I ain't got nowhere else to go. I'm compressed. Amen. I get it. In other words, compress says that if I right now compress myself down, and if I go down enough, I can fit up under this thing. It'd be very uncomfortable for me. Right. Come on. I'm talking to right now. I'm talking to. See, and then when I come, when I'm compressed and I'm bent and I find myself up under here where it's not comfortable, then I got an option. No, no, no. I got an option. I got an option to begin to talk, amen, some stuff that's not God and not His Word. Or I got an option to say, God, if you put me in it, you gonna bring me out of it. Y'all know what I said. If you allow me to be compressed where I'm abundant, I'm looking for you any time to bring me up out of it. Y'all can't make me think this is my life because this ain't my life. Y'all can't make me think I'm supposed to stay up under compressed and bent down. No, not according to the word of God. I believe that I am a part. And if God, you don't bring me out, then a part of the movement can't take place. Come on now. Come on now. You is talking. Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord. My God. Got to get some can you be bent? Can you be stretched? Amen. Can you be bounced and sprung back? Amen. 
and still operate in what it is God has called you to operate in. Come on now. Y'all messing with me up in here on today. Nothing, uh, nothing against your praise team, but I didn't feel like y'all was operating according, amen, to the God-given ability that's within you. And so in, the, in other words, if I'm not operating or coming up to the God-given ability inside of me, it becomes chaotic. I wish I had two people, amen, talking to me. And so why God has given the ability and the gift to come up here and sing songs that's going to change the atmosphere. I did sing songs that bring chaos. So I wish I had three people just talking to me up in here. Because it is the sound that is coming from your mouth that is not sounding like deliverance. I need a sound that sounds like deliverance. That's going to cause something inside of me to go to stirring and go into breaking up. Break up the foul ground that's inside of me that don't need to be there. And it requires a sound. So any word praise him. Every time you come up here, you got to come up here with a sound. Don't come up here looking like you sad. Amen. And God ain't done nothing for you. That lets me know you ain't got no resilience. And if you ain't got no resilience, that is a place that you need to find yourself crying at this altar. I ain't making no altar call. You know what you need. And if you need resiliency, make your own altar call and say, God, do it what you've never done before that I can still operate sometimes you know like God I've been come to the circus my God Y'all want to be real? Yes. Come on now. Yes. Come on now. I sat in the service the other night, and I said, this feels like the circus. So, I feel like a circus up in here. So, why do you feel like a circus? Because I'm seeing too much. I'm seeing people that's acting like they got it and they got it. But the, 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 the oxymoron to that is we could have it. Yes, right. we can. Yes, we yes. can. Yes. Is that we could have it. So why sit and not really have it when you really have it? All right, all right. All right let me, let me. Can I keep moving that road? Let him use you. Come on now, let him use you. So today God is saying, amen. Who, Jesus? Listen, listen. I can see a vision, but it'll never become reality. Or it'll never come into existence if I don't have consistency. Right. Yeah. Right. Come on now. Y'all want to talk to me from that place right there? Yes. Yes. I want to yes. talk to you from yes. that place. Right yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Isn't it amazing that you can see something and know something, but not have enough consistency to obtain it? Right. Now I don't want to just see. I don't want to just even possess the thought of saying I could have. I won't. Right. I want to touch it. Amen. I wanted to call it to come into manifestation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it requires consistency. Yeah. I've been saying that God, we've been married for almost 20, so I've been saying amen half of those years right there. And it required me consistency. Because if I bag off today, what happens? Then those things begin to diminish. My relationship with God begins to diminish. Yeah, yeah. The presence of God begins to diminish. My hunger for God begins to what? Diminish. Because there's no consistency. In other words, when God is stretching, when God is bending, I have to have a deeper place of consistency. Yeah. Amen. Right. In other words, I have to have so much consistency that, amen, I fight with unbelief. Right. Oh, Y'all didn't hear what I said. No, 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 no. I ain't asking nobody else to fight. I'm going to fight it myself. No, Goliath, I want your head. Y'all ain't desperate enough. See, that's what was wrong. That's what was wrong. Amen. David was desperate. He wanted the head of Goliath. Amen. He said, no, 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 I want his head. Amen, I want his head. And in my mind, I can envision David, that small boy, saying, no, I want his head. Y'all not consistent enough to want the head of something. Yeah, right. 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 What's mastering you today right. that you should have the head of? My God. Oh, my, 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 my. Good. my God. <laughs> now, what's mastering you and I today that we should have the head of? Yeah. And then when I get the head, I want to sit up on a trophy case. 
to let the devil know I mastered this through consistency. Amen. Matt, y'all know. Amen. Okay, I'm going to the word of God. I'm, I'm gonna go there with y'all. Jump with me to Second Kings, chapter six. Second Kings, chapter six. I want the hair. I want the hair. Whatever it is, I want the hair. Y'all got it? If you have it, just say, I have it. I ain't hearing everybody. I still hear some papers. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 17. If you got it on your Bible, your iPad, your phone, uh, whatever you have it on, let's read. This is what it says. It says, And Elijah prayed. I'm praying for his servant right now. Okay. Because if you remember, uh, I believe it was the Syrians that had camped around them, and, and the servant got fearful and thought that they were going to overtake them. All right? The, 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 and so... Elijah, and sometimes you got to pray for people that's walking with you. Sometimes as leaders, we have to pray for people that's walking with us. Because at times the battle gets very intense. And then sometimes you do get stretched. And sometimes you get pulled and it seems like this is my breaking point. And God is like, no, you're not going to break. I know what, can, what, what, what you can do. Isn't it amazing that we think we're about to break and God is like, no, you're not about to break. And really, if you really want to know, you got about 200 more feet that I can stretch to. But in my own finite mind, because he's an infant, an infinite God, but in my own finite God, I see that this is not happening. And so what I'm starting to see now is that I'm about to break. No, you're not about to break. Tell your neighbor, say you're not going to break. I tell him if you was going to break, he wouldn't put it on you. If you was going to break, he wouldn't allow you to go through it. Tell him you got about 200 more feet that God can really stretch you out. If you really want to know the truth. Oh, glory to God. Tell him, oh, thank you, Jesus. Tell him and then when he stretch you out 200 more feet, you still not going to break. He going to allow you that when he's finished stretching you, you going to come back into your original shape or your original form. Who am I talking to in here this morning that you've been and God is about to bring you into your original form. Amen. To God. Oh, Jesus. So here it was. Amen. In 2 Kings 6 and 17, Elijah had to pray for his servant. In other words, instead of the servant praying for him, uh-oh, I'm finna help him. Go on, Instead of the servant praying for him, he had to pray for the servant. You mean to tell me that you're going to walk with me all this time? And you done saw us fight many battles and win? And all of a sudden this little Syrian army encamp around us and your faith get weak? You ain't become a partaker in the first place. You were sitting up there acting like you had something that you really didn't have. Because if you was a partaker of what it was that I was giving out, you would already know that we won the battle. Uh, See, what happens is this right here. We're walking along a journey. And along this journey, there's different people with us. Okay? But in this journey, Ursula, um, things, we come, we come into test. And it, we come into things, and all of a sudden, we're walking all together. Now, thank you, Jesus. Uh, well, you saw me win battles back here. Yes. Which gave you the confidence to keep walking with me. Yes. Yes. Oh, gee, y'all didn't hear what I said. It gave you the confidence to keep walking with me. Because you saw the giants that we took down. You saw the heads that we cut off. But as we kept walking, amen, you saw the battles increase. And unbelief and doubt crept in your heart. And you said, they taking over us. They taking over us. My God. They never was taking over us. Listen, I went to 
went to the movies the other night. I saw this movie called Hercules. Uh, Y'all want me now, I'm sorry. Okay. It was, so, but Hercules and them were going to this other um, town to help their war. Okay. Now, while they was going to this other town to help them war, um, the enemies uh, came out. And there was this man that sat on a hill and he looked half man, half horse. Yeah. So um, they was always afraid of this man that looked at half horse, half man. And what did they call him, honey? The centurion. There you go. Mm -hmm. And so every time this man he would come and he would stand on top of this hill, and they say he looked half horse, half man, and he'd make them take down. They knew him, get away. But Hercules, somebody say Hercules, had something different in his blood. Okay, he had a little bit of something different. He had what I call confrontation. See, when you got resiliency inside of you, you will realize that at times I need confrontation. And when confrontation, when it's my time to confront, I'm not bagging down. As a matter of fact, the only place that, I, that the only reason why I'm in this place is because I didn't confront what I was supposed to confront in the first place. If I would have confronted it, it never would have been like this. Now, who am I talking here today? See, you got to know how to confront some stuff. Amen. The reason I was in an abusive relationship is because I didn't confront it when it first started. Y'all remember? Hear what I'm saying? Because it, whatever you confront in the beginning, you're giving it no more power. So you got to learn how to rise up and confront some stuff. And say, oh, no, 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 no. All right, so let me, let me back down. So, Hercules took them over to meet the centurions. And when they got over to that land, they realized he was never half man, half horse. They realized he was just a man on a horse. Who am I talking to in here this morning? That you don't let the devil cause you to think that your situation is bigger than what it is. You don't let the enemy make you, amen, amen, glory to God, doubt what it is God could do. It never was a half man, half horse. It was always just a man on a horse. And he said, if you're a man on a horse, I'm a man that got several horses. And through the power of God, I'm getting ready to take down the man that's on the horse. Somebody is right here. That after today, I promise you, I'm going to have it together in a different way. Uh, see, the devil didn't want you to say that right there. I promise you that after today, amen. Because there was never a such thing as a half man, half horse. No, there was never a such thing. Can I tell you, amen, that what the enemy trying to make you think is there's never a such thing is as long as we got the word of God. But sometimes we got to speak to unbelief and doubt. Yes, 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 yes. My God. Yes, 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 yes. So, all right, let me go and read this for y'all. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. Elijah prayed. He said, God, open his eyes. He said, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servants. What did he do? Open his eyes. What did he do? Open his eyes. And he looked and saw the hills full of what? And chariots of what? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before all he saw was the horses and chariots that seemed like they was coming to take them out. But this time when the man of God prayed and God opened his eyes, he saw fire around him. Oh, Jesus. No, no, y'all didn't hear what I said. This time he saw fire around him. In other words, the fire was to let them know that God is in control of this thing. If we've been seeing victory, we're about to see more victory. The power of God has not stopped. Can I tell somebody that's sitting in here today, God is about to open your eyes so you can see for real what your situation is causing to happen. Come on now. Come on now. 
somebody have slapped your eyes and say, open my eyes, God. So, open my eyes, God. Oh, no, you need to say, God, open my eyes. Maybe my neighbor don't want to see, but I need to see. God, open my eyes so that I can see. If God ever opened my eyes. Oh, God. Come on now. If God ever opened your eyes to really see, it's going to knock you off your feet. Because you're going to see what was always there. That you've been believing and doubting wasn't there. It's there all along. But so many things cloud us from seeing. But if God if open somebody's eyes. Listen, you ever seen a blind person? I've been in service, people was blind. And man laid hands on their eyes. They said, I see. It changed the whole world. Some of you, when God, after tonight, after today, God is going to open your eyes. And it's going to change your whole world. Because you're going to see from a place you never saw before. You see that. And you've been wondering, you thought it was money you needed. Ah, come on now. You thought it was a boo you needed. Come on now. You thought it was, uh-uh. Let me tell you what it is. All you need God to do is open your eyes. Isn't that something? That sometimes we miss it because all we need God to do is if you open your eyes, you'll make a different move. Right. Yeah. So I touch out and say, God, open my eyes. God, open my eyes. I'm almost finished. So he said, open my eyes. John 5, John chapter 5. I'm about to wrap this up. This one starts to push. John chapter 5, very familiar passage. It should be anyhow to all of us about the man who was lying by the pool of Bethesda. Minister Marcia, grab my red mat out of my office on the wall. Second, John, uh, John 5, John chapter 5. Listen, I, I, some of y'all wasn't at church the other night to hear what Prophet Marcus said. He said, every time you come to the house of God to hear the word of God, it ought to be able to enlarge you. That's right, that's right. It, if, you, if you ain't coming to the house of God and nothing is expanding inside of you, then they question my motives for why you question me and say, why you coming? That's right. Lay it down right there. Spread that out for me. All right? Because this is what it said. John chapter 5. Okay? Y'all see that map down there, right? Mm -hmm. That's prayer map, but I'm using it as a map. It says this right here. After this, there was a feast of Jews, and Jesus went up to where? Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, okay? This is what it says, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, wilt, wilted, waiting for the moving of the water. Why are people sitting waiting for something to happen when God then chose you to make it happen? But in other words, sometimes people cannot see themselves making it happen because, amen, they have no sight. Listen, I have no mother, wife, daughter, evangelist Sharonda Greenlaw. She is blind by nature, by natural. She's blind. But I, one thing I know about her is that she's not blind in the spirit. I said all of this to say that sometimes people with natural eyesight, they have natural eyesight but are blind in the spirit. It's very dangerous to have eyesight but yet be blind. No, y'all didn't hear what I said. That's a dangerous place to be, to have natural eyesight but be blind in the spirit. And so for an angel went down at a certain time or season into the pool, troubled the water, whosoever then first got in, stepped in, was made whole, whatever diseases he had. When Jesus saw him lying there, and Jesus already knew um, he had been there for a long time in that position, he told him, what you doing here? Can I put it my way? 
how I believe Jesus would talk. Thank God for the vows and deeds. But I believe Jesus would say, what are you doing? What? Well, Jesus, I'm waiting. Wait for what? I'm waiting for somebody to help me. Put me in here. What, what do you mean put you in here? Well, I ain't got nobody to assist me. Okay, let me keep reading. Let me, let me, I'm just going to keep reading because I'm going to paint a picture for y'all. Paint a picture for you, and then I'm going to show you I'm going to work it all out, all right? So he said this right here. He said, number seven, the impotent. A man asked him, sir, I, ain't got, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool while I'm coming. Another steps in before me. And Jesus said to him, rise, take up thy bed, and do what? And tomorrow. Six months from then. What's your Bible saying? It said immediately. The man was made whole, took his bed up and walked. On the same day was the Sabbath. Isn't that interesting? Interesting. How long have you been on the mat? Can you imagine laying here for 38 years? What's on your mat? No, no, okay. I want to break down a very visual picture to you. It may be graphic, but you know what? You need it to be graphic. Can you imagine what's on the mat for 38 years? He never crawled off the mat. He never got off the mat. He stayed on his mat for 38 years. His feces was on his mat. Oh, y'all don't want to be real with me. Uh, 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 uh. His, his, his urine, everything was on his mat. His, his sweat was on his mat. Everything that had met, everything that you could think of was on this mat of 38 years. Who in they right mind lays on a mat for 38 years? In that type of shape. Who lays there? You want me to tell you who lays there? A person who has no resiliency. A person who has lost their confidence in God. A person that refused to think differently. Uh, Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Those are the people that will lay there. A person who will not believe that they are a major part of what God wants to do. That is a person that will lay on this mat for 38 years. And see your situation day after day, year after year, the same way. Only thing that's changing is the feces that you are curing on your mat. Oh, y'all don't want to be real with me today. That's the only thing that's changing. Ain't nothing that's changing. What I love about Jesus is this right here. Why Jesus didn't come pray for him? Because praying what he needed. Why Jesus didn't come lead him through the sinner's prayer? Why Jesus didn't offer him five principles? Now y'all hear what I said. No, 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 no. He didn't offer him. Why he didn't feel sorry for him? Why he didn't have a pity party with him? Now that ain't what he did. He spoke to the dormant thing. That was lying inside of him. That was there from day one when he got on his mat. In other words, what am I trying to say? All it takes is one word from God. To speak to the dormant place inside of you. That will cause you to rise up. And see yourself from a place that you never saw yourself. That will change your entire world. Jesus caused that man's world to be changed not in 24 hours, not in 72, not in 48, not in 7 days, nor in 30 days. But Jesus caused that man's situation to be changed immediately when he spoke to the dormant man that was in That man's world changed. I see that man rising up right now. Every time Jesus said rise up, I can see him rising up. Feet might be shaking, but I'm coming up. 
Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. When Jesus said rise, there was something in the voice. Y'all don't hear what I said. That's why I said, praise Steve, you gotta have a voice. Because there is something in the voice of authority. There is something in the voice that God has sent that will speak to everything inside of you and give you the strength to rise up out of a place of confusion, out of a place of being delusional. When God sends the right voice, you can be in a situation for 38 long years. But when the voice speaks to you, it'll be unlike a voice you ever heard. And something will begin to tremble on the inside of you. And you'll feel a staring inside of you. And it'll seem like there's an awakening taking place. And where I've been for 38 years, I realize that I can come out of this place. And you'll look back at that mat. You'll snatch that mat up like you have lost your everlasting mind. To speak to some people in here today that need to snatch your mat up and say, I heard the voice of God, and God told me to rise today. He told me to pick up my mat because I was able to do the impossible. I'm able to make it happen. Snatch your mat up, somebody, and tell the devil, I'm coming out of this place. I'm coming out of the way I used to be.
I'm going to try to talk to y'all this morning. I'm going to close right there. Some people have what I call chronic unhappiness. Mm, my God. No, I said chronic. <laughs> you know, some people got chronic pain. Oh, yeah. No, 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 in a natural. But their chronic pain in the natural is because they got chronic unhappiness all over them. And they're trying to medicate a chronic with a natural uh, a substance when what they need is not natural. Which turns into chronic unhappiness. Chronic unhappiness is, it says to me, like the Surgeon General be warning y'all to smoke cigarettes. That is dangerous for you, it could cause cancer. That's what chronic unhappiness is. It should be a, a, a Surgeon General's warning that it could create something that you don't want. Mm-hmm. All that they would pick up his man for him. That he could have picked up himself. Mm-hmm. They would roll it up. You know what they were done with? Mm-hmm. Do it in the train. But as for him and his potential, you know where he would have been? In his place. That where he was supposed to be a major king on earth to the movement of God, he couldn't see past his mouth. That was life for him for 38 years. That was his life. That's a sobering moment right there. It was in him all along. It was there. He was created to rise up. He was created for victory. He was created to rule. He was created to have a He was created to be somebody. But over the course of time, his situation blind. The hurts, the pains. They blinded him. All those things in life began to shape his world. And he could never see himself under him. No further than where he went. And so that's what ran his life. Yeah. 
change. All he did was gave him a revelation. And anytime God gives you a revelation, he's saying that I'm unveiling some things. In other words, what was veiled and what was closed, God you need to close it close to be open. Some people need a revelation. You can't read about revelation. You can read revelation in the back of a book, but you can't read revelation. Amen. You gotta be able to press in before God. And you gotta be able to seek God for yourself and say, God, I need a revelation of my situation. Because this time next year, mother, I'm not gonna be on this same mat that you may see me on today. And so, God, I need you to open my eyes so that I may see what I never saw before, God. I need you to open my eyes, oh God. I'm not gonna walk, I'm not gonna be there, God. Let her immediately happen, God, so that I can rise up and be the daughter of God, be the woman of God that you have already created me to be. It's inside of me, God. There's a warrior waiting to come out, God. There's a millionaire that's wealth inside of me, God. Open my eyes, God, so that I can see. Stand to your feet, I love you.